attesting to probably some challenging conditions along the river. Patch is leaking. And yep. So one of the challenges with seams, again, is always these, these edges. And if you have any air moving through here, it will find its way down to the edge. With that, I'm going to grab a heat gun and uh, clean this up a little bit, and we'll peel the patch off and get it flat. Yeah, see, so once I soften that, that glue, the bond just kind of goes away. So assessing this repair, we'll lay an inside patch inside of the tube, and that gets pretty in-depth. And then once we have that inside patch in the tube set up and cured, we can inflate the boat, and it'll hold air to shape, and we should be able to get an outside durable patch that conforms better over these wrinkles in that rounded end and I think that'll, uh, that'll cure this. It's gonna take a little bit of cleanup. Again, chemicals, you wanna work in a, a very well ventilated area, uh, fresh air. Uh, in this case, we're gonna use a little bit of MEK very lightly. Overuse of MEK, cleaning stuff up like this can weaken the material. We gotta be a little bit careful with how much we use. So once we get this cleaned up, we'll, we'll come back, show you the, uh, the repair as we go through it. So what we need to do to get a good inside patch is have a little bit more of a wound to work through per se. And so what we're going to do is use some scissors and we're just, I'm just going to follow the already damaged piece of fabric here and lengthen that slit out just a little bit more so that we can get in there and do some work. <clears throat> This tear is on the same plane as the seam, so it's actually flat on the backside because getting this sealed up would be probably near impossible. So oftentimes in the boat shop we've got uh, some PVC or Hypalon pre-cut patches laying around and I use them for templates, so we're just going to quick like trace this guy out. We'll cut it out real quick. Okay, number one rule on patches is no 90 degree corners. So we're just gonna take and much the same as our template there, follow the corners and round them off. And this will be our inside patch. The next step is to lay out where the patch is gonna go. Obviously we can't trace it on the inside of the boat very efficiently, so what we'll do is lay it on the outside of the boat and we'll draw a line where the patch would go if it was on the outside. And then by feeling along that line when we sand inside the boat, because we do have to prep that surface as well and get adhesive on it, we can use our, uh, use our fingers and that line to kind of judge the surface area that we're sanding on inside the boat, as well as when we go to put adhesive in, we're going to have to do it very delicately through this hole. And the next step that I usually do is to lay our, lay our patch back out on the area that it's going to end up in. and find a good center line reference. In this case, I'm just going to fold the patch back and make a note of the end of the scratch here. I'm going to roll the patch back a little further. I'm going to make an another mark here. I'm going to roll it back a little further. And I'm going to make another mark here and somewhere towards the middle that mark uh, I'm gonna mark the boat right here and what we're doing is we're just basically laying out some marks so we can align the patch as we put it together and so I'm just gonna connect my marks kinda in line with where my patch goes and now I can transfer that over and I've got a good idea on how I'm going to align 
the patch once it's inside uh, because again I can't see the edges so I can't use the edges to make that alignment. I need to make my alignment through the hole. Uh, in this case I think we're going to be able to gently sand through the hole. Got a little bit of a workspace and so what I'm going to do is, is use this sanding tool and I'm going to prep that underside surface and I'm going to use pressure from my finger to force it down onto the sanding tool and I can see pretty handily where the sanding is happening. So I'm getting out to the edge of where my patch needs to be. We, again, we don't need to work too hard to uh, have a clean line for the patch because it's going to be inside the boat uh, and, and not visual. So, uh, but we do want a good bond, a good clean patch, and so we need to follow all the, the same rules that we do for an outside patch. I might want something a little more aggressive in this case. Uh, so again, gently, this is a pretty aggressive file. Um, I would use caution, but I'm going to use this rounded edge uh, and gently just break that surface up a little bit. Following my line around. That's pretty well roughed up. One of the important things is, since we're working inside the tube, we want to make sure that we get any of the sanding debris and material out. So one of the challenges we have uh, when we put a patch on the inside is not gluing the inside of the tube to the other side of itself. There's a trick we do. Uh, fortunately, with this boat, we're really close to a valve, uh, which makes it pretty easy. Generally, I go to the closest valve to the tear, and I'll remove the valve valve wrench and this valve was already loose so we'll just spin it out pop our gasket off and we just don't want to lose our cage down in the other end of the tube so generally what I'll do is tuck it off to the side down in a corner close to where I'm working but out of the way in this case it'll be really easy to find we'll just keep it up here in the nose of the tube and what I'm going to do is take a piece of standard plastic packaging, Ziploc bag works very well, because the adhesive won't really stick to this. So I'll take this and I'll lay it out inside the tube behind where I'm going to do the patch, kind of like so. It'll be, we'll poke it through the hole and then get it inside the tube. And the idea is then that uh, we don't want to leave the bag in there, or I generally don't like to leave plastic in the tube, so I run a string out the valve hole and then we'll pull the bag out the valve. This is quite a bit larger bag than I need for this particular project, but we'll make use of it. We're going to prep the patch, that's our next step. So the next thing we're going to do is chemically clean the surface. We've already mechanically cleaned the surface by sanding the inside, sanding the patch, and getting it clean. So now we're going to take MEK, this is a PVC boat, chemically clean the surface. We'll reach in with the rag and uh, get, uh, get all of these surfaces nice and clean, so ready to accept uh, adhesive. Again, we're using uh, PVC, so we're going to use a urethane adhesive. It's going to be the same principle as we did on our basic video. We're going to do Two, three, two to three thin coats on the patch, two to three thin coats on the boat inside. And we don't want the the adhesive to be super tacky as we try to snake it into the, the tear. Uh, we want it to be pretty dry and not want to stick very bad. Once it's in there, we can use a little bit of MEK and reactivate the adhesive uh, and it'll bond just fine. So patch a little bit like this, uh, careful not to touch the two edges. And I'm going to slip it right in our hole. There's no glue on the back side, so it's not really going to want to stick. Uh, gently open the the tear and we can slip it in and just let it drop on that piece of plastic we can see in there it's not positioned correctly but it is flat glue side up 
Uh, so now what we're going to do is very carefully find our alignment marks on the patch. Uh, they just become a little bit more tedious because you're working through a hole inside the boat. This is a pretty comprehensive repair video, but you know I think anybody with the basic skills and patience to uh, put a raft patch on is capable of doing this repair. These are the kinds of skills that I think you at least have to have an idea or a visual of you know how you might do a repair like this if you're going to go on uh, longer expedition trips. What we've got now, we've got the patch kind of laid into position real close to where we want it be, to be. We're going to reactivate the glue on the inside with some MEK, just a very light wipe with a, a rag and that'll tack it up a little bit and get a, a bond started with the patch when we start laying things down. Again, I, I want to keep it relatively dry and not get an immediate bond. Uh, we can reactivate it a little bit once we get some of these kinks worked out. Very light, and so it, it actually kind of reactivated over here. It really kind of had evaporated by the time I got over this side, so this adhesive really isn't super active right now. So what we're going to do is in order to finish up this and try to get as many of the wrinkles out as we can, so I'm going to use a clamp along this edge to hold that fold with some tension and kind of try to keep the keep the wrinkles out. Until we get everything set. So again, I'm going to reactivate. We, we've got a good bond down here. I'm going to reactivate this with some MEK real quick. So we have a couple of wrinkles. Uh, again, this is a very difficult spot to, to get flat. Uh, we will make it flat. What I'm going to do is take this, uh, as we're going to have an overpatch anyway, and just uh, kind of trim this wrinkle out of here. And then we'll get, that'll ensure that we have a nice flat bond. Uh, Again, uh, the arrow. Now we've got a couple of bubbles that we can work out, but at this point, I feel like this is about as good as we're going to get it. Uh, again, we're going to have an overlay patch over it, which will cosmetically clean it up a little bit. Uh, patch is going to be quite a bit bigger, uh, so we'll kind of take out this whole effective area, and uh, you'll we'll cover it up. And I think it's uh, it's going to hold air. Uh, next thing we'll do now that we've got it flat, we know our bag's inside. We're not going to glue the tube to itself. Just double check, and yep, everything's. And loose, we'll uh, get a block and a board and we'll put some weight on it. And in 24 hours, we'll come back and we'll repeat the procedure for installing an outside patch. Uh, if you haven't checked out our video on basic patches and PVC repairs, check that one out. And we will uh, basically be performing the same, same sequence of steps that we uh, covered in that video and putting an outside patch on this. And then I believe we'll have an air holding boat.